Today on Triad Perspectives, billions of dollars are at stake and you can make it happen for our state. Today's special guest will explain how this money could benefit our schools and it won't raise your taxes. bond package affects education and a host of other areas. Guests from three of the schools involved are joining me now. Please welcome Chancellor Harold Martin from North Carolina A&T State University, Chancellor Franklin Gilliam from UNC Greensboro, and Dr. Quentin Johnson who is Vice President of Student Support Services from Guilford Technical Institute. Thank you all very much for being with us today. It's, I know you don't have time to do this, but just give me a few minutes and Absolutely. we're going to talk about it. Yes. I, I want to start with the bond, of course, uh, Connect NC. How do you feel about that, Chancellor Martin? Very supportive of Connect NC. It's important to our state. Uh, it's important to this community at large uh, and significantly important to each of the institutions represented as part of this discussion with you today. And so very supportive, very excited about the opportunities that the bond bring to North Carolina. Uh, quite honestly, so I'm very pleased. What about you, Dr. Gillian? Well, as a newcomer to the community, i am uh, been impressed uh, that a wide range of groups have come together in support of the bond. Uh, a bipartisan group uh, in the legislature, which is, I think is very important. Uh, we've been uh, uh, collaborating across universities throughout the state and with the community colleges. That's right, that's right. And so it's been a real collaborative uh, effort. And the reason that it has is that uh, the bond has the great value of benefiting all of us. This is an opportunity for uh, the entire state to prosper and for many, many constituencies and institutions. So Dr. Johnson. Yes, very supportive of the bond. The collaboration, as, as the chancellors have, have mentioned, has been phenomenal. It's unusual to see this level of, of collaboration. Our higher education institutions uh, work very well together, but the, uh, the nonpartisanship uh, that is behind this bond, the fact that there are no taxes, mm -hmm. and that uh, there is a broad range of constituencies that will benefit that's, is a plus. You know, that's the thing that scares us. Yes. You know, those of us who are voters, no taxes, no, taxes. no tax increase. How's that going to happen? Well, the, the low interest rates today, uh, the state of North Carolina is retiring significant debt. Um, uh, some of that debt's related to the past bonds that were issued uh, uh, shortly after 2000, the first bond referendum, 15 years ago. And so low interest rates, um, paying off some of the debt, increased revenues that the state's continuing to uh, realize today. I would expect the state will continue to be in a very good position to accommodate these new bonds uh, as part of an investment in North Carolina. But Dr. Gilliam, you know, people are afraid when you say that, aren't they? I mean, they sure. think, come on, you really can't not tax me for this. Well, I, I think um, the debate around this has been misguided in a little ways, in, a, in, in many ways. Uh, this isn't about taxes or no taxes. This isn't about buildings. This is about people and it's about prosperity. It's about training future citizens of North Carolina in fields that are very important uh, to, to the state, whether it's nursing in our case or engineering or a wide range of other uh, uh, programs that will be developed as a result of the bond. The prosperity part of it is that now those folks turn into tax paying citizens. They raise families in our communities. Uh, they help sustain the community. So it's about people in prosperity. Uh, the predictions on the taxes, you know, as whether the, whether the d read my lips, yeah. right? Nobody <laughs> believes it. Right. Um, right. But, but it's a wrong focus. The question is, do we want to invest in our future or not? That's right. And to me, this is about investing in the future of the people of North Carolina, and in our case, investing in the people in Guilford County. Uh, and it's smart, it's, it's sort of smart financially. The interest rates are low. You always borrow when interest rates are low. The money's almost free. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a big statement there. <laughs> well, it, it is. It is. Yeah, that's a big one. So, so Dr. Johnson, yes. when we talk about collaborating, obviously yes. community colleges are 
right in there with all yes. the universities. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Community colleges, all 58 community colleges are behind this, uh, this referendum. The, uh, the community college system will uh, receive $350 million if this bond, bond passes. And so because we work so closely with our university partners, the, uh, many of our, our transfer students uh, come into GTCC and other community colleges and say, I'm going to North Carolina a and <laughs> or I'm going to UNCG. How can you help me? And, and so our collaboration, uh, both in, in our programs and in, and in our partnering to serve students and for workforce development is central to, to uh, the prosperity of the county and to our institutions and the students we serve. So the students that come to GTCC, and way long years ago, I remember yes. it as uh, what Guilford Tech or something yes. like that. Yes. Uh, are they coming with the intention that they're going to be there and then go on to a university? Or are many of them come there and that's where they're going to graduate, yes. right? Yes, yes. Many of them come for short-term training programs, workforce development programs, get a skill, get a trade, get to work. Other students come, adult learners come to get their uh, basic skills, get their GEDs, uh, and then make decisions. A large population come with the with the uh, not understanding what they want to do, and they come to say, "I need to get back to work, help." And so we uh, we meet the needs of a broad range of students, and they do come for a variety of reasons. But at the end of the day, it's about workforce development, get people to work. And for those students who come to say, "I want to go to uh, to one of our university partners," we support that. Many students also come, and as they grow and develop, make the decision that uh, I can take that next step. So, so, so is there a percentage? How many just come to get better at what they're doing? How many come with the intention of going on to a college or university uh, somewhere else? We, 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 good question. Uh, GTCC serves approximately 40,000 students annually. 30,000 of those students are, are in program, short-term training programs uh, in our corporate continuing education uh, division and in our basic skills area. Uh, you know, we've, and so a lot of those individuals are coming specifically for, for the type of training that will get them right out into the workforce. The other students, uh, of the, the other 10 to 11,000 students, come and uh, they, they come for a variety of reasons. They know that GTCC can help. They, wanna, they want to move to, to another level, uh, the next step for them in their life's journey. Uh, some individuals come, they just want to take one class. Mm -hmm. other, stu other students come, they want to get a diploma, get a certificate. And, uh, and so in terms of percentages, it, uh, it fluctuates from year to year, but there's a solid number of students each year that transfer to, to, to our partner institutions here. And, uh, you know, we're very, very proud of that. So. And at, here at North Carolina a and I'm sure you see a lot of students who come out of community colleges coming here. It, is that a large number or? We, we generate approximately uh, a little shy of 1,000 transfer students. Most of those are community college transfers. Mm -hmm. Our largest feeder uh, through the community college transfer uh, program for our university is GTCC. And so we value our partnership with GTCC very much. And they're also partners in uh, initiatives that we have with K-12 in enhancing uh, the performance and success of uh, students in K-12 as well. Uh, but they're also involved in economic development initiatives as defined through business relationships uh, that are critical needs of this community. For example, uh, in the most recent initiative that we have all are part of, and that's Union Square, where our nursing programs are working together to ensure that we're providing uh, more and better prepared nursing graduates to Cone Health, for example. So uh, a significant number of collaborations among the three of our institutions, uh, great relationships uh, across each campus strong connections with GTCC. So, Dr. Gilliam, does that, is that increasing? Um, you know, here again, I grew up in Greensboro, and I don't remember always seeing the schools collaborate. Mm -hmm. So is that kind of communication and cooperation increasing? I, I think so. Again, I'm a newcomer, but I think uh, one of the people always ask me, well, why did you, why did you come? And I think one of the reasons was that I, I felt like um, Greensboro was poised to really take that next step. The universities we're starting to come together, they're coming together with the community colleges. The private sector has come to the table with higher ed and said, we need to work together uh, to grow this community. And that's a tremendous opportunity for uh, the universities and their students and the community colleges, but also for the companies. And that's why the bond is so important. Uh, Dr. Martin mentioned uh, Cone Health. 
Uh, we have a nursing school. Uh, the bond is going to help build new facilities for that. We're turning away 100 plus qualified nursing wow. students, qualified nursing students mm -hmm. every year. We have a bottleneck in our chemistry and biology lab, so the mm -hmm. kinds of people who would go to get jobs at, at LabCorp or someplace can't get the courses, takes them longer to graduate, costs mm -hmm. them more money. Mm -hmm. Uh, our, our program at uh, Union Square, where we're our, our doctorate in nursing program, will help train the A and T undergraduate nurses, who will help train the GTCC That's nurses. Right. So it just moves along. Right. 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 But, but it makes sense. Mm -hmm. it, do, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. that you have these fine institutions in the same, right. within a few miles of each other, mm -hmm. and they're working at cross purposes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So exactly. I think, and I've been lucky to be able to collaborate with these institutions. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a short break right now, and when we come back, you'll hear more about how this bond can impact you and your family through these gentlemen. Stay with us. This is a North Carolina and t State University Historical Minute. I'm Marilyn Parker. The Dudley Memorial Building houses more stone applications than any other building on Antis campus. A sweep of 15 stones guide visitors to the main entrance. Built in 1893, the original facility contained a library, an auditorium, and administrative offices. In 1930, a fire led to a reconstruction and the facility was renamed after a and second president, James B. Dudley. Today, the building is home to the Maddie Reed African Heritage and H.C. Taylor Art Galleries, music classrooms, and laboratories. The Dudley Memorial Building is located on the east side of campus, directly behind the statue of the AT4 and right across from Dudley Road. Welcome back to Triad Perspectives, taped right here at North Carolina AT in our TV studio. Today we're looking at how close to one billion dollars can support our state schools. My guests today are Chancellor Martin from NC a and Chancellor Gilliam from UNCG, and Dr. Johnson from GTCC. Again, I thank you all for being my special guest today. I, I want to hear more about how specifically this kind of money will help a and Not a has been preparing for a, a new college of engineering complex for well over a decade. Uh, and uh, in most recent years, raised the level of intensity and, and having frank discussions with the legislature and with the Board of Governors, uh, the growing demands and needs for a new college of engineering complex. And so uh, we had spent this past year in more intense conversations, and as part of that discussion, uh, the legislature, the governor, at first began a discussion around a bond package. And within that bond package, uh, there was discussion around including a College of Engineering complex within the bond package that's been proposed. Mm -hmm. The legislature then picked up on the governor's proposal to create a bond package, and, and, for, and the legislature as a whole voted then to bring forth a $2 billion bond package as we know now as Connect North Carolina Bond. Uh, within that bond package, there's a $90 million complex for North Carolina ENT, uh, for engineering research and innovation complex, as we're calling that facility, that will expand our ability to increase research, graduate education, and innovation in our collaborations with colleagues at the table with us today, engineering complexes throughout the region, and continue to expand our capacity to produce increasingly larger numbers of engineering graduates. And engineering here at AET is, is the biggie. I need to come back to school and get an engineering degree. <laughs> We'd love to have you, actually. Yeah, thank you. Dr. Gilliam, how is it going to help uh, UNCG? Well, as I mentioned earlier, it's $105 million uh, to create uh, a new nursing and STEM building for us. Uh, maybe the best way to relate is to tell a story. I was in the current building, and when the governor was here, we held a press conference. And we were afraid to take the governor up in the elevator mm. because we weren't certain the elevator would actually <laughs> oh. make it to the third floor. Oh my. And uh, <laughs> so that tells you the condition of the yes. building. Yes. And uh, the fact of the matter is this. If the state wants to prosper, if Guilford County mm. wants to prosper, we need to be on the cutting edge. We don't want to right. be behind. That's right. We need to be out front. Mm. That's right. And that's why engineering is important. It's why nursing is important. Um, it's, it's on this leading edge, and it's only on the leading edge 
Will you truly innovate? And will you truly prosper? And uh, otherwise, the state's going to lag behind us. People know now uh, North Carolina has added uh, an extra 2 million people mm -hmm. since the last bond in 2000. There's more demand on the state. Uh, we're getting record numbers of applications to the universities. Mm -hmm. And it is our obligation, indeed our duty, to provide world-class education to the people of North Carolina. Well, maybe if you'd taken that governor up on that elevator <laughs> and it stopped, that would have gotten his attention. Sandra, <laughs> Sandra, you know, you're, you're getting me in trouble now. Uh, <laughs> that might have made your yeah, point very closely. Uh, yes. And Dr. Johnson, yes. tell me exactly how it's going to help GTCC. Yes, it'll help GTCC and that GTCC will receive $9.5 million uh, to, that will go toward the renovation of the Medlin Campus Center. Now, now, the Metlin Campus Center was constructed in 1975, and if you've ever been to, to GTCC, and for those of you who have not, it's on a very hilly, uh, uh, rolling metal kind of campus, and so it's up and down. But when the building was constructed, the main entrance to the building 40 years ago was constructed to go into the second level. Uh, Dr. Randy Parker, our president, often talks about the, uh, uh, our purpose and our mission is access, success and completion. Well, access, particularly for students who are handicapped and disabled, uh, having to enter a building, uh, you cannot enter the building from the front entrance. And many of our students, a great number of our students that come to the Jamestown campus arrive on the GTA or the High Point uh, uh, buses. And so they come, if you're handicapped, you have to go to the rear of the building and it's a large building. So, so in terms of access and accessibility, uh, it makes sense for, for this uh, $9.5 million to go into that building, which has been on the uh, master plan since 2005 as a priority. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's a uh, 114,000 square foot building constructed in 1975. And that may be keeping it's, a lot of people from coming if they can't navigate, they can't navigate that space. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And it's been, uh, my understanding, 15 years ago since um, we had a bond like Last this. Bond. That's, that's a long time. So, yeah. I want to also mention to all of you watching us today that if you have opposing views or you'd like to add something, we'd love to hear from you. Just go to our social, to our website, Try It Perspectives, and, and leave your comments, and I'll be sure to let you know what everyone is thinking. Uh, back to you, Chancellor Martin. Um, when these students start leaving the community colleges, and coming to A and T and UNCG, do you have room for them? How, how much room do we have to grow? We have an opportunity. We are approximately eleven thousand students today. Our projections are to grow to about fifteen thousand. Wow. And so, obviously, we have to continue to make provisions for students to grow to eleven thousand to fifteen thousand students. That includes providing parking, which is a big, mm -hmm. big conversational oh. issue on our campus, to say yes. the least. Uh, but also provide additional accommodations in residence uh, halls. Uh, to provide opportunities for access to growing classrooms, increased technology uh, use on our campus and access to uh, growing opportunities for innovation through technology um, and the way we deliver programs on our campus as well, but also how we enhance the investments for support of a growing population of very talented new faculty on our campus and increasing research possibilities and opportunities, innovation, and through that innovation so th th this is big. This, this is, is a big deal for us. This is a big deal. Oh, a big absolutely. deal for UNCG. Mm -hmm. right? It's a big deal. I mean, this is, um, I don't think you can overstate mm -hmm. the importance mm -hmm. of this particular time period. We've come mm -hmm. out of the recession. Mm -hmm. We now are sort of getting back on our feet. And we're saying, okay, what strategic decisions and investments mm -hmm. do we need to make? I mean, time doesn't come around every day. No. Right? And there's a reason why there hasn't been a bond since 2000. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those watershed periods. I think for all three institutions, all three institutions. Uh, this is a very right. critical really time for us. We're a growth campus also. We'll be accommodating more students. Uh, I think that you're going to see changes in the way that higher education is delivered. Uh, we're going to have to think more creatively about how we offer education to students, how we train them, and how we provide research opportunities for our faculty. And that, that, that's, that's, that's where we are today. It's big. big. We're going to have to take another short break right now. And when we come back, we'll tell you where you can find more information on Connect and See. Stay with us. This is an a and Historical Minute, and I am William Robson. The Corbett Sports Center opened December 3rd, 1978. 
It is named after Ellis F. Corbett, a 1931 graduate of a and Officially known as Mr. a and his official title was Sports Information Director. He performed many other roles on campus, including dorm counselor, and he was a member of the board in control of intercollegiate athletics. The three-story complex includes office space, classrooms, and two racquetball courts, in addition to an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Corbett also houses many of the human performance and leisure study courses at A&T. The Corbett Sports Center is the current home of the North Carolina A&T men and women's basketball teams and the swimming team. This has been a historical minute, and I am William Robinson. critical support for North Carolina's university system, community colleges, and other state infrastructure that are very needing of that particular bond. So my guests today are from the three colleges and universities right here in our area. Uh, we want to hear from you. If you have a different view from what you're hearing from them, please let us know. We'll be more than happy to share that with our audience. Uh, I was going to get to you, Dr. Johnson, and yes. ask you exactly how you're going to use, how could you use that <laughs> money? Uh, to use that money to to renovate a building that needs help, that needs to be uh, made accessible. Uh, HCAV, the uh, heating and air conditioning, electrical systems are, uh, are over 40 years old. It's a large building. It was built in two phases, and so this 9.5 million dollars would, would actually be the first phase of a of a 30 million dollar project uh, in order to get the building up to speed where it needs to be uh, and as, as chancellors have said to be the type of cutting edge facility that uh, the residents of Guilford County uh, are deserving when they come to, to visit to, to, to get the help they need. And I want to talk a little bit about STEM. That seems mm -hmm. to be so hot these days. Why? Well, if you look globally uh, at where, um, technology, where innovation is occurring that is focused on enhancing the quality of life, food production, food safety, technology that improves um, health conditions, transportation systems, communication systems, in all aspects of life, social life, playing, having fun, uh, driven by technology innovations. And the drivers of that technology innovation are STEM-related professionals, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And I so talked to um the lady who's the principal at our STEM program here at A&T, and she brought a couple of students, and they were so bright. Yes. Uh, and I'm thinking, yes. all students aren't like that. Mm -hmm. But this bond, if it's passed, can help not just the STEM students, but others too. Right. Well, I, I like to talk about STEAM. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> because I want to add, I wanna, I wanna add the arts to this mm -hmm. discussion. Yes. Um, uh, we're increasingly finding out that uh, many of our problems, social problems, physical problems, biological problems, are highly complex and they're related, all sorts of interrelated systems. Mm -hmm. And we find arts and culture plays a role in that. Mm -hmm. uh, while it's not on this bond, I think we need to broaden our scope and I think getting to this front edge, to have the facilities to do that, allows us to bring in these other areas. And that's where transformation really happen. So I'm very happy mm -hmm. to support Connect NC. Mm -hmm. I, we need the bond, we want the bond, but I want us also to think beyond March 15th, yes. which is, by the way, when folks need to come out exactly. and vote in support okay. of the we bond. We need to emphasize <laughs> that March yes. 15th yes. is it. There's vote. not going to be a yes. chance after mm -hmm. that. That's right. Right. That's right. March 15th, 15th. remember that. Mm -hmm. And so do you think you'll be able to send more students off to a university when they leave you if this happens? Any, any, this helps give GTCC an edge. Students have options. And when they come, anybody can come to the open doors of a community college. And so when they come to those open doors, they have great access, uh, they're, they're made comfortable, and we're able to meet them where they are, talk to them about the articulation agreements between GTCC and UNCG. Mm -hmm. Articulation agreements between GTCC and North Carolina a and State University. Uh, hope is what we give to young people and to adults. So yes, this will help. This will help make us better, help us receive our students better, serve them better, provide better access. And in the long term, it's going to help our state, our country Absolutely. better. 
because it, you know nowadays I'm finding people saying if you don't have a college degree, right. you can't find a job. Absolutely. Right. And so I this agree. is going to help bring them, bring our state up too, right? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Investing in education uh, is always wise. Uh, it does make a difference, and, and people think that uh, creating education is indeed just um, part of preparing individuals for a job, yes. but it's not. Uh, as Chancellor Gilliam has suggested, mm -hmm. the arts are critically important as well. That's right. Um, the the quality of life is enhanced significantly right. uh, by the arts, the performing arts, and the humanities, uh, quite honestly. And so if enhancing the graduation and education of individuals across the spectrum of areas, uh, enhancing the education of our population, critically important. K so nothing's left out. Nothing's it left does, out. It doesn't matter what you want to major in. Absolutely. Right. Nothing's left right. out. Well, Sanjay, I'd like to bring it down to something really basic and really simple. Okay. <clears throat> this bond will bring uh, over $200 million to Guilford County. Mm -hmm. That means jobs. Mm -hmm. That means people are going to need yeah, construction. They're going to need HVAC. That's they're that's going right. to need materials. They're going to need food service. Right. Go down the line. Mm -hmm. So this $200 million has a ripple effect on mm -hmm. the local economy. So if nothing else, if you, uh, you have to understand that it's not simply the universities. Have been, it's not simply waiting until the students graduate. But it's going to be as soon as we start breaking ground on these things, people are going to get jobs. That's exactly right. And I, and I also want to mention to our viewers that this bond also not only covers education, mm -hmm. but it covers yes. infrastructure, roads, yes. Yes. Farms, water systems, sewer systems, yes. yes. state yes. parks. Yes. I mean, in other words, veterans. We get water, all dressed water up water now, systems, can't we? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we have Absolutely. water systems and mm -hmm. the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that sounds wonderful. And I can't yes. tell you three how much I appreciate you coming together. Thank you. And Thank I hope you. our viewers will look and see, see, they're all buddies here. You know, yes. nobody's, <laughs> there, there's no opposition. Right, no. We're not trying no. to just get students to AET no, or just no. UNCG. No. Yeah, we're all working no. together on all this. Working and, together. and I'm sure yeah, it's yeah. going to work just beautifully. Yes. I want to remind our viewers that this is something that's going to be up for you to vote on March 15th. Yes. I talked to the Board of Elections and they said after that, you know, we don't have another chance to mm -hmm. do this until, you know, the folks down in, at the State uh, Department decide that we'll, yes. we'll try mm -hmm. this again. Mm -hmm. So two billion dollars is on the line and we yes. want to get it for our yes. students, for our youngsters. Yes. If you are a parent at home and you don't even have children yet, right. you know, think about it. You're going to have them someday maybe and, mm -hmm. and this will be there for them. I want to yes. thank you three very much thank for joining me today as my you. special guest. Thank this you. has been thank delightful you. to yes, have you here. Again, you. Uh, that's all the time we have thank for you. today, but we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to hear your comments and suggestions on what you think we should or should not be doing, especially when it comes to March 15th. Mm -hmm. um, just type blogs.unc. Uh, let me say that again, just type blogs.ncat.edu slash TV studio. For more information on this $2 billion bond, just go to connectnc.gov in the search bar of your computer, and you can read more than you have time to read about <laughs> it because it's that important. And don't forget, you can watch us each Monday at 5.30 on Time Warner Cable, Channel 69. You can connect with us on social media. Like us on Facebook at Triad Perspectives. We're on Twitter and Instagram at Triad Perspectives, um, so ncat.edu. Watch us on YouTube by searching NC Aggie TV. A special thanks to our special guest today, and thank you for watching. I'm Sandra Hughes. Have a great evening.